the second year. I hope this isn't too long for a first post, but here goes. My H and I started dating 10 years ago and have been married for 5 years. We have two beautiful kids DS age 6 and DD age 3. Two years ago, I started talking to a male friend on FB that I had dated a few times around 8 years ago, at a time when H and I had decided to not see each other. It developed into an E pretty quickly. Our marriage had been severely lacking in conversation, affection, SF, we were really just coexisting. A few months into emailing the other man it became a pot when we met up in our hometown for a drink and to catch up. I have been wandering through the fog for two years since and coming and going from my H after the first six months. I moved out of the marital home to live with my parents but returned six months later. I stayed for six months at home again, still keeping in contact with OM and I ended up getting pregnant to other man. I booked a termination straight away and had to wait out the eight weeks hiding my tiredness and nausea from my H after the procedure I felt compelled to get out of the marital home again because I was stressed from keeping up the double life. So, I moved back out again but by myself this time. Throughout the two years, my H did the best he could to try and jolt me out of the fog. I told him about the EA pretty early on but I continued to deny the PIA throughout. I justified myself to him that he had neglected me and that I was entitled to befriend people, OM, to fulfill my needs for attention. He responded with fairly consistent attacks on me, yes, deserved, and occasional periods of trying to win me back by doing something nice for me. Unfortunately, all I really saw through the fog was the barrage of negativity. When I moved out at the beginning of this year, Leah was starting to die a natural death. Faced with realities instead of fantasies, I could see Leah was riddled with issues that hadn't seemed apparent before. Trust being a huge one, yeah, duh. It finally hit home when my age told me that he was done waiting and that he was getting to know someone else with a view to moving on. At the same time, I had to leave the house I was renting as it got sold and I had great difficulty finding a new one. My H said I could move back home temporarily while I found somewhere new to live. I started thinking about whether I should come clean about the affair. I was having less and less contact with OM because we were constantly fighting, and I was scared at the thought of H moving on. He had now told me they were now dating. After I moved back in, one day H started up an intimate conversation with me, which eventually ended with him asking if we could make love the following night when we came back from the family concert we were taking the kids to. I knew it was wrong given his new relationship, but I wanted to so much that I went along with it. The next day he confronted me and said I know now that you have been sleeping with OM because you were so different when we made love last night. And I blurted out yes, I did, but quickly reverted back to lying and told him it had only been since Christmas. His response seemed like a very strange reaction but he said he needed to make love to me right there and then otherwise he would feel like he had lost me forever. I didn't want him to think that, so we did. We had some short awkward conversations about the A after, but I was too scared to tell him the full story. But the next day, I decided that I would, it was time that he knew. I emailed him and told him that I needed to sit down and tell him everything. That night I told him the whole truth about how long it had gone on and about the pregnancy and termination. He was a lot more devastated this time but his reaction was that he thought he could probably get past it but he wasn't sure how. After talking very late we went to bed together again and made love again. At this point, so around a month ago, I gave him the passwords to all my online accounts, email accounts, Facebook, bank, offered my cell phones for him to go through, changed back to my married name on Facebook and my email address. I had been using my maiden's name again, started wearing my wedding rings again, blocked other man emails and FB account, removed from FB friends anyone I had met through other man, asked stage to be FB friends again, everything I could think of to make my life an open book to him. Other man emailed me a week later to find out whether I was back together with H and H intercepted it as he was in my email account and told me. I told him to delete but H asked if he could reply and I agreed. H sent him an email, as me, telling him that I was deeply regretful about what I had done and although H and I weren't back together yet I was going to do my best to work on myself to make that happen and other man needed to not contact me ever again because it was over. Everything an end of a fair letter should say really. I told my H that I would do what it took to earn back his love and fix our marriage. But there was the issue of his new GF. What happened since on his side of things? My H's relationship with his GF has been playing out a bit like an a he has had difficulty being honest about it. At the start when he told me he was getting to know someone else, that was quite an understatement. Truth was at that point they were two months into an exclusive physical relationship. But he didn't want to scare me off from coming back to him. During the days where we first slept together, and I confessed first the short version then the full version, H was going back and forth between sleeping at home and his GF's place. After my full confession, he said he would do the right thing by his GF now that he had cheated on her with me and tell her the truth as well. But twice he told me that he had confessed to her the truth and he was still being dishonest about it. He did tell her the relationship was over about a week after my confession, but never told her why or what he had done. He kept telling me that we had a future, we would work our marriage out but he just needed to be careful about GF because of them working together. 
We started doing as much couple and family stuff as we could to try and get things going again and he assured me he had cut all personal contact. But I picked up his phone one day when I was at his place just as she texted him telling him that she missed him and she wanted to see him to talk some more. I also found dirty pictures of her hidden in his phone. My H when confronted admitted there was still some contact but turned on me and told me that I had been manipulative, controlling and had forced my way back into his life when he wasn't ready for me. He told me he still had feelings for her and was not ready to let her go yet. He still maintained that there was no real future with her and there was a future with me, but he still wanted that happy feeling he had had with her in the meantime. He wanted to be able to decide between short-term fulfillment with her or hard work repairing our marriage with me. I, however, was too angry to let this go on. I didn't want to be kept on the hook and felt that she didn't deserve to either given his behaviors toward her that she didn't know about. So, I decided to expose him by emailing her with the full story of our encounters, his lies and what he'd been saying about using her. Needless to say, she blew up at him. She threatened him with walking out of her job and leaving him to pick up the pieces and explain to his bosses. And H was obviously furious at me for interfering and exposing him. Where to now? So here I am now and I'm not sure what to do next. I still want my husband back and I want us to recover from this with a much better marriage than we ever had. He is now repeating back to me the same things that I said in the A, we were never happy, never in love, our problems are insurmountable. I don't think I can forgive you, I had happiness with Opus that I never had with you. I know that really, I deserve this, but it hurts all the same. I also know that he is hurting deeply too because of what I have done to him. I am trying to understand what he wants at this point but he doesn't know. He tells me that all he wants is SF from me and to otherwise leave him alone. He says there is no trace of relationship left with his GF after what I did and that she now hates him. But he tells me he is not prepared to work on the marriage at this stage and he wants me to leave him alone to figure out what he wants. So, should I do that and leave him well alone? Or do I go along with the nothing but SF idea? At least I'd have the chance to meet one of his top needs. Or do I try and push for more contact? At the risk of further aggravating him. I want to do what will give us the best chance of sorting this out, but I'm pretty confused. He is in an affair. I guess I have been reluctant to label it as such or identify myself as a BS because of my own actions. My affair has been exposed to my family and close friends. I told them myself after I told H I apologized to my family who I had lied to in order to sustain the I also apologized to my friends who I asked to lie on my behalf during the AH asked me not to tell his family because he did not want to deal with feeling like an idiot for having let it go on for so long, so I haven't told them. When I exposed his lies to his O, he had to quickly tell his bosses at work about the situation because she was threatening all kinds of payback at work. I have told all my friends and family about his but again, have left his side alone. His friends and family all knew about the new relationship and were happy for him that he seemed to be happy again. However, in saying that they would be surprised to know how dishonest he has been with both her and me. Yes, I should really tell them about both as and hope they will try and exert some influence on him. My family already knows about both affairs. But his family don't, so I am going to expose to his friends and family. O is single, no husband or BF. To be honest, I'm a bit reluctant to pursue her side any further. She got into the relationship with H on the understanding that they were both unattached and that he was exclusive with her. She was very cut when I emailed her to tell her that he had been lying to her and cheating on her, with me. She was absolutely furious at H. She was previously married for nine years and divorced her husband because he slept around on her. Because of the work situation, most people at their work know that my H was sleeping with both her and me and lying about it so there has already been exposure there. I am not sure how I would contact her family if I was going to and I'm not sure it would serve much benefit in this situation. I believe H when he tells me that O absolutely hates him and avoids him at work. She took three days off after I told her what he had been doing and is now trying to decide whether she is going can handle working with him. I am hoping she will resign, but if not, he will have to quit if we are going to sort things out. For me, the other man is six hours drive away so NC is a bit easier. I feel that H is mostly just holding on to O as a weapon against me. He knows that not being open with me together with seeing her at work is hurting me and I think that's mostly why he's doing it. We were pretty solid for the first 18 months then we were on off for the following year or so. During an on period, I fell pregnant with DS. We made the decision together then that we were going to commit to each other properly and be a family and we got married when DS was 18 months old. I am starting to put together a plan for plan including targeting his top needs. I know SF and conversation are quite high for his needs, and dishonesty and anger. I have set a target of six weeks of plan for myself. I kept reading six months as a time frame for plan A elsewhere on the site, which sounded like a daunting task. But I know I've seen on the link Scotland posted that it's actually three to four weeks for women. I think I can be a bit stronger and go a little longer. I have a bit more to make up for, after all. Plan A got off to good start last night. I apologized for my angry outbursts the day before yesterday and asked if we could spend the evening together watching a movie. I promised no relationship talk or questioning. He was a little reluctant initially, but agreed. 
I stuck to my word and we watched a movie together and then talked for a couple of hours on general topics. I asked him how work was and he talked about nearly everyone at his work. I have worked there twice on my summer break so I know most of his workmates, but he very carefully didn't mention oh. May have been a test to see if I would ask, but I didn't bite. He didn't initiate anything physical so I left it at that. I am planning for exposure to his family and friends. Nearly all of them live out of town so we'll email them. Just found a link to exposure letters for some ideas of how to word it. Hope the fallout from him doesn't last too long after I send it. I've just sent the following to his mum, sister, four of his close friends, my mum and sister as well, just to keep them on the same page as they already know. I am writing to you as you are H's friends and family and because I hope that you will help H and I in this difficult time. As you know, H and I have had a rough couple of years in our marriage. About a month ago, I confessed to H that I had been having an affair with another man. I am deeply ashamed of what I did and the hurt that I have caused my family. I have stopped this affair completely now and cut all contact with the other person. I am now doing everything I can to make up for my despicable actions and repair our marriage and family. However, since my confession I have discovered that H has been having an affair with a woman at his work. He told me that he had the same hopes for us repairing our marriage when I confessed and asked for his forgiveness. But he had trouble being honest and he continued his intimate relationship with her even after he had told me it had stopped. I want for him to stop his affair because I love him and want our marriage to be restored. Our marriage can recover from these affairs, and I can forgive him and work on the problems and issues we have, but we can't until he completely rids our lives of his affair partner. We had a strong relationship when we started off our family, but I now recognize that we need to do a lot of work on it. Please do what you can to discourage this infidelity. Please help me and our children to maintain an intact family. Please encourage H to come back and work on our marriage. I have to say, stomach is feeling a little queasy anticipating H's reaction. But it's for the best. When I exposed to O, H called me lots of names and said he'd never forgive me, but calmed down a day or so after. Well, so far, no reaction. It is a little strange. We have been texting about stuff relating to the kids, no mention of it. I'm certain he would not keep it under wraps if he knew. I left the emails and my sent items and FB2, but according to my Gmail access history he has not actually checked my email account for about a week now. The main reaction I am anticipating is from his mum. I know he has told her very little as he felt that she would not be able to handle knowing the truth about what was going on. Maybe she just hasn't checked her emails today. I managed to get the password to H's home computer today and got in to have a look. Looked at his FB again but he's definitely deleted any messages sent, received from her if there has been any further. He's been looking at her FB page and photos though, a couple days ago most recently. I left a keylogger on it so we'll see if anything else shows up. I decided today that I had better make sure it was clear to him what I was expecting in terms of no contact. I don't know if this was a good thing to do, but I wanted to just put out it out there. So, I texted him and said I just want you to know that our marriage can't recover until you have completed no contact with her. That's going to mean one of you leaving. Which sparked H off into an angry rant, telling me I'm harassing him and annoying the hell out of him etc. Kept replying with variations along I'm fighting for this marriage I love you and want you to come back so we can be a family again. He lashed out at me a few times about how little it meant coming from me given what I had done not so long ago. But this response from H pretty much sums up his side. I still don't believe that you really want me. To me you seem scared of being alone which is why you keep pushing for my company. I don't want to come round for tea, I don't want to watch movies with you and I certainly don't want to have slept with you. My head is spinning from all this crap I have achieved nothing lately because of your pushiness, I'm getting little sleep and still having nightmares. It's a damn nightmare in itself, I cannot think. So, is this to be expected or am I actually being too pushy? I have been texting him each morning to say hello, ask how his day is going and say something I've been up to. I have been inviting him round to watch a movie or have dinner, and yeah SF as well but he has declined all invitations. I have been trying to keep relationship talk to bare minimum, though I've gone with it when he brings it up. Should I back off a bit? At the moment my time frame for plan is 6 weeks, so early August is when I will reevaluate. I am definitely going to keep going as long as I can on plan a given my own infidelity there is a lot to forgive on his part, so I know I need to give him a really strong demonstration that there can be a good marriage to come back to. I know that plan B will most likely follow, so I am keeping that in the back of my mind. For my plan A, I believe that his top needs are, SF, admiration, conversation and affection. I know that openness and honesty is obviously high at the moment too given my affair. Physical attractiveness is up there as well. He does like having the house clean and tidy, domestic support stuff, as well. But we live in separate houses at the moment so makes things a little more difficult. For both SF and the physical attractiveness needs, one of the things I have been doing for him is sending photos of myself, just cute, physical shots. He found out that I did this for other man and asked me if I would do it for him, which I have been doing regularly, every day or so for the last few weeks. 
He has been giving me compliments and appreciation when I do and saying he loves the attention and how it makes him feel really wanted smile even though he was quite grumpy with me this afternoon, I still sent him one tonight, but will not follow it up unless he replies. I always send a few flirty texts in a conversation or comments if I get to see him. I'm not one to dress up all the time but I always dress up a bit more if I'm seeing him. I make sure I have my hair and makeup looking good even if I'm dressed pretty simply. I know that he does appreciate that, he often tells me he admires the way I dress and present myself. However, he told me a couple of days ago that he's decided that he wants absolutely no physical contact with me. He won't explain in detail but basically says that he feels too angry at me to touch me. He's fine with pictures or flirty texts but no actual touching. Interestingly, found quite a lot of porn sites on the recent internet history when I went through it this morning, so I guess that's his outlet right now. He's told me for a long time that he needs physical affection and physical closeness. And I'm not confusing this with SF, he definitely says he needs physical contact of a non-physical as well as physical nature, so hugs, kisses, shoulder rubs. But again, there's the don't come anywhere near me problem just at the moment. For conversation, I have been trying to just start conversations here and there. I send an email or text around lunchtime each day and tell him what I've been up to, ask how his day is going, sometimes send a link to something funny or interesting. But he's been 90% ignoring me. He'll pretty much only respond if I bring up something about the kids. I'm trying to add admiration into conversation where I can. I've never really thought about H as being someone who thrived on admiration but when I thought a bit deeper, I realized that it's more noticeable that he gets very, very discouraged by criticism. So, I'm assuming on that basis that it is one of his needs. Criticism or judgments is definitely one I have to keep under control. I am trying to think calm, positive thoughts so I don't let any angry outbursts out. I'm trying to be careful not to attack his character. If I have to point to something bad, it's his behaviors, not him. I am being careful not to demand anything either. I know that this one gets him riled up. Breaking it down to day by day, I have been and will keep doing the following. Send him at least one text or email and try and strike up a conversation. Include at least one compliment, admiration. Send him at least one photo and a flirty comment. Invite him over for dinner or a movie or a family activity at least two to three times a week. And then basically, whenever I can get him engaged, I will try use the time to demonstrate my efforts to fulfill his needs. I guess what I'm wondering at the moment is, is it possible to overdo it? He started saying I'm harassing him. I wasn't expecting warm, fuzzy reactions but on the other hand, I'm not making things worse, am I? Update on last couple of days. Positives. Exposure has worked subtly, but positively. There have been no angry outbursts about it but H now knows who I told and what I said. I finally found out yesterday that H's mom and sister acknowledged getting the exposure email but they basically said they had no opinion on the matter. To be honest, that is fine by me. I wasn't really expecting them to be supportive as they have never really liked me, but I felt they needed some idea of what was going on. And they should know about my affair too which they didn't. For other friends and family that I have exposed to it seems that they are gently encouraging H to come back and give things a go. H says that he now feels that that is what everyone is looking to him to do. This is not making him happy, he feels pressured, but it's a positive for the M anyway. I managed to spend most of the weekend with him. H spent Saturday morning helping me with my car. I had to go round and ask him how to get a headlight bulb out of it, and he insisted on doing it for me, going with me to make sure I got the correct replacement, etc. He also let me come round Saturday night to watch a movie. I sat close to him on the couch leaning gently on him and rubbing his knee which he didn't resist. Sunday, I offered to go with him to take DS, DD and H's nephew swimming so we did that and had lunch together afterward. Then I took DS and nephew to the movies and he invited me to stay for tea after I dropped the boys back. I did all the dishes and cleaned the kitchen for him while he put the kids to bed which he appreciated. I also showed him a job opportunity that he would be great for and he has decided he will submit an application for it. But, I fell into the trap of relationship talk last night. We ended up talking from around 10pm to around 1.30am because I asked him how he was feeling was really silly of me because it didn't achieve much. Basically, he said what I expected anyway he is still missing her and holding on to the memory of the fantasy of the easy relationship and happiness that he had with her. I do already know this so I shouldn't have asked. Going to make a much bigger effort to not bring it up at all now. He knows that I will need NC to go forward so I must leave it alone. I did try to make it up a little this morning by going back over there early and getting the kids dressed and ready this morning and dropping Dee Dee off at daycare so he didn't have to get up till 9am after going to bed at 1.30 after our talk. An update, I have been keeping up with plan as best as I can over last two weeks. H's behaviors had seemed to be starting to get a little more receptive, to the point of being quite friendly, up until last Thursday and then there was a dramatic turnaround. He got a bit nasty and started pushing me away again. Had a gut feeling something was up but carried on with plan as best as I could despite being ignored. So found out yesterday what it was renewed contact with O. 
She started texting him last Thursday telling him she was lonely and was willing to forgive him for the lies and cheating and negotiate them getting back together, on the condition that he cut all ties and contact with me. Well, good news is that he said he wasn't prepared to do that, and we have a had great weekend hanging out as a family and I slept over at his place. But I'm still cautious about the fact that this scenario could get played out again if they keep working together. However, positive on that front is that H has an interview in three days for a new job, one that he has been wanting for years. It would involve a move to a new city, but that would be pretty good for all, I think. We haven't had an in-depth discussion about what it would mean for us, like moving together or separately, or how we would do it, but I have been assisting him with his interview prep and giving him lots of admiration-loaded pep talk smile. I have to say though I am really tempted right now to send O a short to the point text message telling her to back off could this hurt. I'm thinking I just want to subtly imply that I'm going to make H more trouble than he's worth to her if she keeps pursuing. Went round to his place this morning to get some measurements for curtains. As we discussed last night, we would tidy the house up this month and then put it on the market. Saw a car in the drive. Left the kids in the car and banged on the door until he opened it. He left the keys in the lock on the inside so I couldn't use my own key to get in. Pushed past him to find O in his bed. So angry right now. I don't even know if I want my H back. I was talking to my mum last night about it and she said surely, it's over now. You can't be with someone like that, he won't ever change. But as I said to her, I've been that person too and I can and have changed so I can't call it over just because of this. I know the addiction feeling for myself, and this incident was a classic example of that. He was feeling lonely so he invited her over and despite his pretty poor treatment of her as well, she was lonely and desperate enough to go over there. Anyway, he came over yesterday afternoon. Basically, what he said was that he has dug himself a hole and he want me to get him out of it. His work is going terribly, and likely will get worse given my exposure. They were earlier both warned by his manager to steer clear of each other so they just got caught breaching that. He doesn't want to be in this town, and no real friends here to speak of. So, he wants me to arrange the sale of our house and find him a new job in a new city. He didn't get the other job I previously mentioned. Maybe that sounds odd that he wants me to do everything, but our relationship has always worked like that. He doesn't like making decisions, so I make all the plans and decisions and he does whatever part I ask him to do. Every time he has changed jobs, I have found him the new one and done all his applications for him etc. So, I asked him whether he was ready for NC yet. And he danced around the question. He said he didn't see the point of a letter as he would just not make personal contact with her from now on. It could be a while before he can quit this job so he'll have to keep seeing her at work till then. But he did suggest that I move back into the house with him. That's where my head is spinning right now. Should I take him up on that? My protectionist instincts think it's a bad idea given his continued contact with her at his work. But then this is a chance to plan a him up close. If I can handle it, he's not willing to be open and honest at this point, so I will be faced with him still in contact with her but doing it right under my nose instead of at a distance. When I moved to my parents, I took Dee Dee with me as she was only 20 months at the time but I decided to leave DS with my husband during the week and see him at the weekends. It was not the best decision in hindsight but I moved back after 5 months. We now share the kids 50 over 50 each having a weekend day and couple of weekdays with both of them. The kids understand that we are living apart because we were making each other unhappy. DS regularly asks us when we are going to be a family again but for the most part is used to the arrangement. Dee Dee is too young to understand too much. I'm not sure that at their ages, 6 and 3, I should be trying to explain affairs to them. I said that I would reassess my plan after about 6 weeks and it looks like I'm there now. In all honesty, I gave a good effort at it for the first 3 to 4 weeks but the last 2 to 3 my energies have been fading. I've still been trying to do nice things for him, but the angry outbursts have been creeping back. It seems that every few days there's a new lie uncovered. This week's ones included the fact that they had slept together regularly in our bed at home. H had absolutely sworn to me that they had never ever had slept together in our marital bed, only slept in it and I believed him because I wanted to believe that that was the truth. He has told me almost every week that him and O have agreed to end things as there's no future, no point prolonging it. But every week I uncover a new email or text message from her indicating that things are still in full swing. He has still maintained that we will move away and make a fresh start on the marriage as soon as we are out of this town. I have been still looking for jobs for him and helping with getting the house ready to be sold. Anyway, yesterday's bombshell was discovering the following text on his phone to O who had apparently gotten upset that I was going around to CH yesterday and had said that she was done with him and tired of the situation. If our relationship and your trust in me is that weak that I can't see her, meaning me, to sign daycare documents and discuss our children's future without you thinking I'm putting her ahead of you again then maybe it is best that you give up. I have been loyal to you for all this time but that's okay, whatever is easiest for you to deal with. I guess I can't keep hoping that you can trust me and that before too long the house will be sold and another tie to her will be severed. Why else do you think I worked on my birthday and all day today to get the house further sorted? I don't want to let you go but you've got to do what's best for you.
So, I confronted him about it and he said he was lying to her and stringing her along because he doesn't want to see her with anyone else as it would be too much for him to deal with since he has to see her at work every day, and that it is the truth that he genuinely intends to move away with me and cut all ties with her and we can start again on the marriage. I truly do not know what to believe anymore. Either he is going to run straight to her as soon as the house is sold and he gets his hands on the money, or he does genuinely want to be in this marriage with me again and just lacks the willpower to kick his addiction. I really want to go straight to plan B but I also want to exit plan on a better note once I'm in plan B the last impressions he has of me have to count because the two years prior to that I was hideous to him. I don't believe anything he says to me or her so I'm trying to proceed in a way that it won't make too much difference what turns out to be the truth. Selling the house is what I want regardless. I've been to see my lawyer a few days ago and he will hold any money from the house in trust so H can't get at it. I don't want to be in the house either as I can't stand the place right now. So as Wheels suggested, I'm going to go a little longer on plan a starting next week I have two weeks off university where I can concentrate on plan a him and sorting the house. I have been lovely to him today, and he's agreed to take two days off work next week to spend all day at the house with me working on it. I hope O finds out about that. I'm going to let him have as much cake as he wants to eat knowing that the end is in sight if things don't get better. I have got myself some antidepressants to help me through the next couple weeks too. Then if there's no progress, plan B is going ahead set of the 4th of September. After spending today at house with H, he told me he was off out for a work dinner in town. I happened to check his bank account as I was doing my own banking and noticed he bought takeaways from a place that he used to frequent with O. Put the kids in the car and went and checked and sure enough there she was at my house with H. I wrote out a letter and delivered it to him this morning before he left for work. I spoke to my mum last night and she agreed to be the messenger for me. I said in the letter that our arrangements for the kids, 50 over 50, would still be exactly the same only he would have to pick the kids up from my place instead, that way I can get the kids ready and waiting in front of my house, then walk inside when I see him come up the driveway. All I did this morning was hand him the letter and gave him a kiss on the cheek and left, feeling like a bundle of emotions right now. On one hand I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders because I no longer have to worry whether he is telling me the truth or not, because I no longer have to talk to him. On the other hand, I have never known H to be decisive and go after what he wants. He sits back and lets whatever happens happen. I'm scared that that could be the last time I'll ever kiss him. I guess it's up to him now. Just at my first plan B test, H stood on doorstep for about 40 minutes, knocking on door every 5 minutes. I saw him coming up the drive and locked the door and drew all the curtains. Guess he knows I'm serious now. He sent two texts but I deleted them without reading them. Got my friend to text him and advise that his text would not be read nor replied to and he is to speak to my mum as per the letter. He will be back in about four hours to pick kids up though. We'll have them ready and waiting. Also, I had to go to the bank yesterday and get my name taken off the joint account so I can't see his bank account anymore. I looked in there yesterday morning and saw that he took her to the movies. The night after I gave him plan B letter. This is getting really tough. He showed up for a third time last night at 11pm and brought the kids around and tried to get me to open the door and take them. He stayed for about 10 minutes then left again but left me a screaming voice message. He has been bombarding my parents with messages and is now saying that he is going to move all his belongings out of the house and stop paying the mortgage because I won't speak to him to sort things out. In his words, she does not have the right to cheat on me for all that time then dictate these terms. Well, I broke plan B and I am kicking myself. I went over there to check on the kids because I was worried about whether he was out of control. The kids were fine and he was reasonably calm but just angry. He just thinks that I have no right to ask him to quit his job because I had an affair first. It does not register with him at all that it was his decision to get involved with his employee. I reiterated what I said in the Plan B letter that he needs to write a no-contact letter and he needs to hand in his resignation to his job. He has already agreed to the marriage counseling and giving me access to his phone etc. It's just those two that are the sticking point. I told him again that if he can do that, I will do everything in my power to make the relationship work and give 110% effort to making him happy. His main issue seems to be that he is ashamed of saying that he is going to be with me. Because pretty much everyone knows that I had an affair and because he's managed to convince everyone that his affair was in fact a legitimate relationship. He says that everyone will think he is crazy to try again with me. Okay, well I'm picking myself and starting again. No more contact with him. I just got a draft NC letter from H. Not happy with it I have to say, but it is at least a NC letter. Here it is. Hi oh. Thanks for your text today but I think what I have to say will no doubt change your feelings. You knew that I have been restless and have been looking for work elsewhere, while I have been looking at jobs and mainly, with the intention of moving there with the kids. Obviously, this will involve OP moving there too, to continue on with her degree. I need to move on from current city and give my family a chance. Do not know if this will work but I have to give it a try, you know how important my kids are to me, and you know about my feelings about family values. 
I will be indicating to this week that I will be leaving as soon as I get a job lined up in another city. I realize how this will make you feel, that you and your friends were right all along that I'd go back to her. She has promised to make an effort like never before, and hopefully we can find something that we lost a long time ago, or possibly never even had, and if we fail then at least we tried. In order for her to start to rebuild trust in me I need to have no contact with you whatsoever which I imagine won't be too hard for you know you've read this. I am sorry how things have turned out, and believe me that it wasn't all lies. Take care of yourself. H. He's also sent me a draft resignation letter. This is what is concerning me at the moment. How to make a recovery plan and does he really want to work on the marriage? His words in those letters show so much resentment toward me. He still feels entitled to his affair because I had one. He still doesn't want to take responsibility for his action. Everything is still my fault. Do I take him back with that attitude? The plan B letter I gave him said the first requirement was you must want to work on the marriage. I don't think it is what he wants but is what he is prepared to go along with. My parents' impression is that his motivation is mainly financial. He will be better off with me. My comment, as bad as they are, these letters are only drafts. I would not take him seriously until he sends you copies of letters that were actually sent with sent receipts. Anybody can draft a letter with no intention of following through. That's too easy. I wouldn't be surprised if he never intends to send them but only to use them to manipulate you to get his way. Sorry, but I would stay dark until you have a verifiable proof that the letters were actually sent. Does one mistake affair lead to another? Comment down below.